Hey everybody, it's PJ here with PJ's Odds and Ends. First thing I want to tell you is the website is up, the Facebook page is up, my Keek account is up. I've got all kinds of ways to interact with you, and I'd love it if you guys would follow me on all of those, um, especially uh, the website. The website is pjsoddsandends.com. I'm on Keek as PJ's Odds and Ends. I'm on Facebook as PJ's Odds and Ends. So uh, I really like to interact with you guys, so, uh, so follow me on those places. Um, what you're looking at right now is a video that's going to be the start of my video blog series, and these are essentially videos that I'm going to be putting in between each project. Uh, they serve a few functions. One is going to be to kind of follow up and and uh, talk a little bit about the project that's just been uh, uploaded or the last project done, and uh, also to talk about projects upcoming, whether it be the next one or down the line. Um, the uh, the tapering jig project that I posted, uh, I guess is about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, something like that. Um, it's gotten a lot of good good feedback, and a lot of that feedback revolves around the camera angles. Um, the camera angles are a little screwy in that video, to say the least, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm using a small tabletop tripod, not a full not a full camera tripod, but a tripod that's about about that tall, about as tall as my head, and uh, made it very difficult to get good camera angles for all the uh, work that I was doing in that video. Um, so I've switched to a, a larger tripod. Um, but I still don't think it's going to cut it. The the one I filmed, uh, the project that should be coming out today or tomorrow, which is the wine bottle balancer, the one I filmed it with is a better tripod and a more of a full size, but still having a little trouble quite getting the angles I want, so I'll probably get a larger tripod uh, fairly soon, and sometime in the next few videos you should start seeing that uh, those angles improve over the as, as we go on. Um, I also got a couple comments about the length, and I agree. Um, my length will probably still stay around 10 minutes for a lot of those videos. I'll, I'll try to shorten it when I can. Um, but in that particular video, the section where I went over the SketchUp model took up a lot of real estate in terms of the uh, the uh, video reel. So, um, and, and I feel like it's some, quite a bit of it was, was a little directionless. So in the future, I'm going to try to keep those computer demos of the plans or whatever down to a minimum and just keep... But I, I felt it was important to do, but uh, probably it lingered on a lot, lot longer than it should have. So that would... Uh, take some length out of the video. So uh, that's all about the tapering jig. Otherwise, just keep the comments coming. Keep letting me know what you like, what you don't like, and I'll try to accommodate. Uh, coming up in the future, we've got uh, uh, quite a few simple projects, beginner projects, because that's where my skill level is. Uh, we got a wine bottle balancer. That's the project, again, that I'll be posting either tonight or tomorrow. Um, I still have some, some shooting and editing left to do on that. And then um, we'll have some bookends that we're going to do, and then we'll also have a, uh, an entryway change tray, like where you'd stick your wallet and keys and all that stuff when you come in. Uh, all three of those are requests from a friend of mine from for his uh, apartment, so I thought I'd go ahead and make videos of it while I'm making it for him. Um, and then after that, I'm hoping to start a couple of... Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to also do some etching, some copper faceplate etching, um, and show you guys how to etch your own copper, fa uh, copper faceplates for your project. So um, all that's coming in the next few videos. Uh, somewhere down the road, there's going to be a table saw workstation that's probably going to take me a bunch of videos to complete, um, and uh, and a mini lathe. Now, the table saw workstation mainly came out of the need for a, a, ha a home for my second table saw. I have two table saws. One is a Porter Cable table saw that I use for most of my projects, uh, but I also had an 8-inch belt-driven Craftsman from the 50s that I was using for a long time before I got the Porter Cable. So, uh, And I don't want it to go to waste. It's just sitting around the shop collecting dust. So... I think what I'm going to do is build a table saw workstation that incorporates that table saw. Uh, originally, I was planning on just incorporating that table saw, um, but the more I thought about it um, and the more I'm seeing some people like Laney and, and Jay and some other people do some cool stuff with table saw workstations and whatnot, I'm thinking about taking my Porter cable off and putting it on that station as well, um, and that way I can build some things around it that are more permanent. The station will be on wheels, so I don't have to worry about moving it around, but I do love that mobile base that comes with the Porter cable saw, so... Um, it'll be a it'll be a decision to make, but I, I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to end up going. I'll probably incorporate that as well, and then I'd also like to incorporate some storage underneath and somewhere in there, maybe in the wings of the Porter cable saw, a router uh, table, so that I can uh, so that I can use that. I've already bought uh, the router for it, everything. I just got to build the router lift and figure out where I'm going to put it. Um, for the router lift, I will be using plans from iBuildIt.ca. Uh, they're pay plans, but they're excellent plans. Uh, go over to his, to John's website, ibuildit.ca and grab those plans. I'm not going to do a video on the assembly of the router lift because he already has video covering that topic. And, uh, I don't, I don't really feel like that's the, uh, the, uh, the best use of my time. So, um, that being said, 
the mini lathe. The mini lathe is going to be a challenge. Um, it should be the simplest, but the, the thing with the mini lathe is um, when you got something spinning that fast, you want everything to be just right in terms of alignment and things of that nature. Um, the mini lathe comes from a project from Shop Notes, uh, and uh, I'll have a link, in, a link in the description of that video when I, when I put it out as far as where you can get the back issue that has that plan in it. And uh, it's going to... I'm going to use a Delta table saw motor that I salvaged from an old uh, Delta um, job site saw that, uh, I mean, the, the saw was crap, but the motor was in great shape. So I salvaged that, and I'm going to use that as my motor to drive the lathe. And everything after that, aside from uh, a few speci very specific hardware pieces, is pretty much plywood cutoffs and, and common hardware So that you could find in any big box home center. So um, hopefully that'll be a great help to you, and it'll be great help for me because I'd like to have a lathe around the shop. So... Um, that's what's coming up, so if you have any questions or anything, feel free to email me at pj at pjsoddsandends.com, uh, or feel free to give me a keek. Um, keek back, if you if you go follow me on keek, I think I've got a question out there about sap and, and how to deal with sap when it's coming out of your wood while you're trying to, uh, while you're trying to mill it, so, um, yeah, I think that's about it, so, uh, keep watching and subscribe and like if you like what you see. Thanks.